name is Uday Benegu and uh, my association with the film Fireflies actually began at a very early stage because I'm a, I'm a good friend of Sawal Shekhawat's. So I will moderate, I will ask a bunch of questions. The only thing is, of course, everybody's been a part of the movie, so everyone has a lot to say, obviously. Let me start with one person at least and then we can move from there. So I'll start with Shankar. My name is Shankar Raman. I'm the cinematographer of the film. Of all the careers you could have chosen, what is it that drew you to choosing a career in films, in making films? I wanted to be a photojournalist, go out and shoot in war zones and conflict areas. Why I really like it is because there's no paperwork. <laughs> and it's, it's like you can literally, you know, you're just dreaming, imagining, cooking up ideas the whole time. <clears throat> I always enjoyed telling stories, listening to stories. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Siddharth Sirohi and I was the production designer on the film. It kind of happened by accident for me, but it was a very pleasant accident. I ended up on a film with Deepa Mehta on water. And uh, I was new to film. I'm, it was my first film without any background or inclination towards film. And I really enjoyed that process. Yeah, I didn't want to do a desk job, so yeah. I'd probably be very good at it. But, uh. <laughs> Rajesh Tanikan, I'm, I started off this film as the first AD and now I'm the associate producer on the film. My father told me that uh, chartered accountants make a lot of money. <laughs> so I decided to <laughs> become a band, child. but the studio and film, uh, music part of film always excited me a lot. And I started doing a fair bit of work for television and I think the next natural step is to do a longer uh, piece of music and that's where a full length feature comes into play. He said you have to fucking learn something otherwise you know you're not going to you know boss is going to find out so I used to go for classes to his house in the evening. My name is Saval Singh Shekhawat. I'm the uh, writer, director and the producer of Fireflies. I came to Bombay. I worked in an agency for a while. I wrote some copy. I worked with some production companies. I got a great break with uh, someone called Shantanu Shore, who at that time, this was probably the early 90s, was considered one of the top people around here. And I worked with him for four years, so I think that gave me some sort of understanding that I might be able to uh, make something out of this life. Living for me has been the single most uh, creative inspiration. But as a kid, I remember is if movies has to be uh, talked about. I remember music actually, you know. Actually, is the soundscapes, as in like what when I when I'm at that place or when I'm this place, the kind of things you hear, you know, the kind of sounds you hear around you, that influences me the most actually. Singer called Marty Robbins, who used to sing these cowboy gunslinging songs, you know, and they were always about honor, and they was always about you know, these guns blazing and these cowboys who were really sinister characters and they were described and they used to really stoke my imagination. And I think I started to listen to music right from the beginning on a visual aspect, you know. I used to always think of... So stories became really important. I love stories that were complicated, that were dark, where things weren't happy endings, you know. And nobody walked into the sunset together. They walked in alone, limping with a gunshot wound. Creativity is not just... Uh, uh, you know, it's not just ideas, it's also uh, what you need to do to, you know, achieve those ideas. So, so there are influences all around. Having met Sabal and uh, the context in which he shared his story, idea with me and uh, invited me to, you know, be a part of it was inspiring enough. Because uh, how did you feel when you read the screenplay yeah, yeah. of the film the first time? So you see, there are several people who touch you or inspire you in your life and they come and they illuminate and they glow and we may or may not acknowledge them but I think uh, the really the, uh, the rewriting or whatever you know the various stages that it went through was about acknowledging those people who illuminate your life. A script that when I read page one to the end and I'm involved and the characters are taking me on whatever journey they're on and I'm invest I get invested in them, then I want to work on that film. It was a very different experience reading something like that because it had a lot of uh, subliminal messages which uh, I identified a lot with and I thought that every character is someone I know. Sure. Actually, when you asked me who was one of the first person to read Fireflies, you, you, you were yeah. probably <laughs> one, of the, really one of the first people to... When I first read the story, which I really liked, it put me in a headspace that I can't say it in any more specific way. It just left me in experiencing a particular feeling which lasted for a certain amount of time. 
and during that period of time while i was in songwriting mode and i was playing my guitar and stuff i found myself writing a song that drew uh, very very strongly from this film that i had just seen it got me to writing the song fireflies even though sabal was not looking for a song for the film and i wasn't writing a song for the film i you just you were looking for a film for the script in <laughs> that part of time the script has to be palpable for me number 1 number 2 uh the director and the director mainly and the crew the principal crew has to i have to feel that they are convinced about what they're doing i like to work with people i like i would uh, rather work with someone i like than work with someone who's probably 15 20% better than uh, that person technically but I, because i believe people i like people i like are largely people who overcome uh their odds are people who uh, have a sense of adventure have a sense of spirit are willing to work hard are not scared uh, don't whinge don't moan you know all with the program it's possible to be uh, thorough in your work it's possible to be i mean that's something which i would say is remarkable about sabal because uh, he's very thorough and he's uh, very particular and it's not like he is sure about what he's doing all the time but then ultimately it's the discipline of just doing it is it brings it yeah. into focus yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then you got to a point where we all signed off and said this is the film we want to make and that was the moment for you and that was almost like a resolution which lasted from then till the time we finished the filming process Ooh. and we got a crew of a intellectual mental emotional caliber that we had over here it would be ridiculous not to uh, you know tap into them and figure out what they want to do i had a Uh, a free hand in working on the stuff you know he he respected whatever i brought to the table at the same time if he felt that it wasn't working he had a, a vision in mind and if that was outside of that he was very open and i think that's the way it should be because it's at the end of the day it's in the interests of the film and that's all that matters when you're doing something like this yeah. you know like i remember spielberg uh, once something once said that He says I'm not half as good as the people I work with. He says my only talent is that I choose the really good people to work with, you know. Crews should all uh, are always uh, customized to uh, should be at least customized to each project because each project is different in the way equations form. So how best and most synergized uh, people can be is what I I look for in a crew. This was in a sense the ideal family. It was like a bubble where there were no egos at play necessarily despite there being various grades of experience and rank and it which makes working so much easier because obviously people want to do this which is why they are here. You you want to be working with people who are at least trying to speak the same language. And you get people at times who don't want to speak your language but at least when you find somebody who is trying to make that effort it makes all the difference and with this film everyone was just literally like i said earlier just moving towards one common goal while you're on set while you're working nobody really sees what the other person is doing that's right. the funny part right. you know right. and you remember back and you will say that what did this guy do you know i was looking at him and you know i will say He was chilling, having a smoke there. He was laughing, backslapping. That's what you remember of things, because the truth is that when the things that are happening, there's no recollection of that. It sort of goes. It's like a game, like a sport, like music, like when you sing. You don't sort of think of the words how they are rolling out of your mouth. So that rhythm that you reach with a gang of people, you know, is uh, really special. You know, it doesn't happen often. Yeah. The most wonderful part of this experience for me is that we laughed a lot. <laughs> throughout the whole experience because you know Saval's nice bad jokes are so <laughs> mainly is that we discussed the style Saval and I bounced off a lot of ideas and we wanted to keep the music as organic as possible in that that there should be uh, a lot of natural instruments you know acoustic piano acoustic guitar and that's not something I've had a chance to do for quite uh, long most of the other scores are either orchestral or slightly in an electronic space When you do a film like this you get a big canvas to paint on and that's obviously so much more exciting there's so much different the, the music has a central theme and yet there's uh, so much diversity in the soundtrack so i think 
that's what I took home from the whole experience. Okay. On a project when you're interacting with the director and the whole team and with the film. So there's something which happens by itself, you know. And that's the thing which happened with me with Fireflies. You know, so it, it doesn't happen, for, for me also it doesn't happen with all my projects or, you know. So that's been the best part about it, like the whole process. And it was quite tough, but yeah. we all pulled through and we all had a lot of laughs. It was, it was yeah. good. It had different it was conditions. Very easy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Maggots and leeches. Oh, yeah, leeches, rain, crazy Maggots are glory, leeches are glory. And uh, it was quite and, tough. Uh, but we all I, for one, I was thinking, why shouldn't this God, I mean, God for second place in terms of the, how far we were from home and uh, so many leeches and it's night, you're maneuvering through so many things and okay, we have leech proof socks to, you know, to guard us from leeches which are coming from the ground. But there were leeches dropping, uh, dropping from the trees and uh, that was really crazy, I mean, it was crazy. The whole experience was very satisfying. And seeing the end product on screen was like, wow, I can watch, I can still watch the film 100 times and cry every time. I want to take both my sons, who are 16 and 20, their brothers. I think it's a movie totally outside of their domain. It's not something that they normally go and watch. So I'd be very interested in seeing what they come up with because they will come up with something that you wouldn't I wouldn't think yeah. about or point out something or whatever, which would be an interesting way of you know, uh, seeing their perspective of how they look at it. But the experience of just uh, sharing it with my family, my parents, definitely. And uh, also I want them to, the reason I have, I'm really keen on showing it to them is because uh, I want to see their uh, response to the different kind of work that I do. I would like people, generally people who are probably dealing with confusion in relationships, you know, who've been good people for a long, long while, moral people for a long, long while, mm. still find themselves trapped between guilt and duty and what they should do and, you know, uh, the past. All those people do I probably... Mean, everybody will understand every story he tells because it's all, they all become his stories. You know? So, that's great to yeah. learn as a storyteller or as a filmmaker. It's great that you don't have to worry about whether, you know, if I tell you a story, whether you're going to understand it. You will because I've internalized it so much that it's going to make as much sense to you, if not more. Yeah. Why don't you throw out an idea which says, this is what I have done. Whoever wants to read it, whoever wants to see it, you see it as you wish. If you're only going to be thinking about, you know, uh, whom will this resonate with and I'll only make it for them, then you're actually you're doing the niche yourself. thing. Yeah. The kind of a script it is, the kind of a characters there, they always has this emptiness somewhere, you know, which is very invisible in the film, which we are trying to kind of say or, or there is nothing, it's null also at the same time, like, you know. My whole idea of making films always has been, whether it's commercial, anything, that it has to have the ability to be able to transport you for a moment of time to a place where it's been designed to take you. And if it's not doing that, then you failed in that exercise, fair and square. To achieve the headspace again, to what is happening at the back of the head, I mean, like, they are not, for them it's not serene, for them it's not peaceful. Working in the way we worked yeah. to produce it. Of course, ours is a much smaller scale, but having said that, it's entirely, <coughs> this is not available to anyone. This is not a template that's available to people to just walk in and do. This is something we created by choice. Yeah. And I think this is possible even for mainstream films. You know, it's... We're yeah. doing our yeah. television movies. This is like how we empower people out there to stand up, to speak for themselves, to think that these are okay situations to be in, and that's what I think. So just but opening up a conversation yeah, with people. Yeah, opening up ideas, yeah. opening up a place where people can have dialogue about it. And I think movies do that. They have done that through the ages. Right? Mainstream Hindi cinema, I don't think people play so much with the sound edit of a film. I mean, the reason I don't do Bollywood is for an end number of reasons. Purely because I'm dysfunctional in a Bollywood setup. Because production design, as design doesn't exist. The place where I am at right now is that I would go, I would say yes to shooting a Bollywood film and I would invest myself in creating the environment conducive to making good films. I think Bollywood or the way films are made over here is just a different kind of uh, industry, art form, which is fine. I mean, that could it could stay exactly where it is, but it's still not in the conventional, traditional sense making films, you know. Films are based on stories that would be engaging and I don't believe a story has to have an audience of a specific kind or a language of a specific kind. I mean, I 
grew up in Assam, and like I've told you before, and some of the most fascinating stories were told to me by people who are uneducated, who had never stepped out of the jungle in their lives. They believed in demons. They believed, and they, by God, they were all real, man. You know. Yeah. The movie, uh, though, is not a commercial uh, Bollywood film, uh, and I would I would say probably it's an alternative and uh, independent cinema. Uh, it still uh, goes way beyond uh, what a regular alternative or independent cinema so far has shown. So I, as a studio, we feel the movie has great potential, and not only the movie as a genre itself. Uh, this is something which we do like to develop, and hopefully have more of the same in future. The opportunity is to see that it's possible, it's available. Just expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do stuff which everybody does, just because it sells or it's supposed to be the norm or whatever. It's it's true to any medium. You know, it's really satisfying. I'm very excited by it. I loved what we did. The mood of the film is what I I'm happy with. I like the there's there's a zone to the film. I think you I've seen it quite a few times, and I still can see it again. Uh, it was wonderful working with the with Sabal and the whole crew. I think for me that is more important because once that thing is in place, automatically what you're trying to deliver is far superior than what you do regularly. And I found at least in my life, I mean personally speaking, I find that happening. Fairly often, maybe quite often recently, I mean, I, I use the term satellites for them because some people are closer in your, uh, who orbit closer to you and some are further away. Some stay in that orbit for longer and some go away. And that's kind of, and they, when they come close, they glow very brightly and then they're gone. And it's okay. It's still okay. And if we can connect with the fact or we can accept the fact that when they're there, it's the most beautiful thing. But when they're gone, it's all right then life is okay. And I think I get that to a certain extent from the movie. I may sound a little abstract right now, but that's how Fireflies works for me. Actually, between light and darkness is existence, right? <clears throat> so I'm saying those are two... So in a film, you try and con make it concise, you make it more contrasty by and large. You have limited time to run lots of stories. You, so even existence is between those moments of light and darkness is where you actually exist, in the shades of grey that he was talking about. So I think just to open up the latitude, or what is visible and possible is what Fireflies is really about. That's all there is. One aspect of uh, uh, one role in the filmmaking process and sort of amalgamated it into another and uh, created this new space that I'm in now as creative producer. Uh, I think that itself is uh, my rating of... I, I wouldn't have taken that step if I, I wasn't sure about it, if I wasn't... Uh, if the film didn't give me the confidence to move ahead. Nine out of ten films I work on are, um, the pitch is very melodramatic. So I cast also accordingly and uh, even though I keep saying keep it real, keep it real, I know it's not real. And that was one thing about Fireflies that I um, wanted to point out. It has uh, made me accept myself. That's the biggest thing that Firefly has done to me. You know, you get influenced by what people say, or you may get influenced by what people say, and you know, things if, if things are not going the way you expected them to go, then you might find people just leaving you and wherever you are. So you may experience lack of support along the way, but I think we completed it, and we completed it uh, with integrity, and uh, and I'm very satisfied. I, it's, it's really complete for me. And I think in this project, it, it ticked all the boxes. I mean, we all felt this way where we just had to do our own bit towards one goal, devoid of egos, devoid of conflict. I mean, there were differences of opinion. But at the end of it, it was moving towards uh, a common goal. We were all on the same team. Actually, we are just trying to build a tribe of people like us. So we are more in number, so we can dominate things differently, we can be more autonomous, we can create the kind of stuff that we want to do. That's the beauty of it. That it, it can be anybody's. This story is so nice. Catch up here. Fantastic.